For me, robots are machines. They are intelligent machines. Intelligent machines that does things that humans don't want to do or cannot do or probably shouldn't be doing in the first place. So in other words, robots for me is simply a tool. So yes, no doubt robots will take away some of our jobs, but more like it's going to be a tool aid. But more than that, it's going to be humans using these tools, technology to make it easier for the job. When the car automobile first came out, new jobs appeared car insurance, car mechanics, you know, call sales, but you know, gas stations, all of these jobs, nobody thought about these things, but a lot of new jobs was created because of this new industry. I think something similar is going to happen with the robotics industry as well. A lot of jobs will be taken away, but more jobs will be created. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Dennis Hong. I'm a professor at UCLA in the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department and the director of Romela, the Robotics and Mechanism Laboratory. We've been developing many different types of robots. Three-leg passive dining walking robot, a wheel-leg hybrid robot, chemically actuated robot, running, jumping, climbing, leg robots, one leg, two legs, three legs, four legs, six legs, no legs, and many different types of things. However, in the past uh, 20 years, we've been really focusing on humanoid robots. And when you, say, when you say humanoid robots, we're talking about robots with two legs, torso, two arms, and a head. So why do we need humanoid robots? Uh, the famous uh, architect Louis Sullivan once said, form follows function, which means that a shape of an object is dictated by what it needs to do. So instead of asking why, uh, what kind of robot, uh, humanoid robots uh, can do, but rather what kind of task requires the humanoid form. So if you look around, this environment was designed by humans for humans. The stairs over there that you have at home at buildings, these steps are designed for humans to walk up and down. So otherwise, so these type of environments designed for humans, unless the robot is a human shape and size, it won't be able to navigate this environment or use tools designed for humans. Of course, not talking about autonomous cars, but if you want a robot to operate heavy machinery, drive a car or different type of handheld tools, uh, the robot needs to be human shape and size. And that's the one of the justifications uh, behind humanoid robots. But besides that, uh, most of the robots today are single taskers. These robots are designed to do one thing and one thing very well. But certain situation requires the robot to be a multitasker. The robot can do many different types of things. For disaster, disaster relief robotics, uh, one of our projects was really inspired by uh, the Fukushima Taichi nuclear power plant accident. In these type of scenarios, uh, when you go there, there's many different type of tools left for humans. And if the robot is a humanoid robot, you can uh, use these tools and rescue people and fix things. So those are uh, some of the reasons why we have humanoid robots. Let me quickly spend about uh, two minutes to show you some of the humanoid robots that we developed in the past 10 years. So this robot is called Darwin OP. It's a complete open source robot, uh, worked together with uh, Robotis. Uh, this robot is considered the United States' very first full-size humanoid robot called Charlie. Uh, Thor RD was designed for a disaster relief. Uh, Sapphire is a shipboard firefighting humanoid robot for the US Navy. And Thor, tactical hazardous operations robot, uses a, if I may say, a artificial muscle technology. And besides that, we developed many big and small different type of human robots, about 12 different type of robots. However, today I'm very, very excited to share with you our latest robot called Artemis. This is the one of its first of its kind and a one of its kind type of robot, and I'm very excited to show you. So Artemis uh, is a human robot, as you can see. It stands for Advanced Robotics Technology uh, for Enhanced Mobility and Improved Stability. Now it is so stable, we test it outdoors, on campus, on the, the, on the field, untethered. And for roboticists, people who do robotics, you know how big of a statement this is. So let me show you some of its capabilities. Now, it is very, very robust for external disturbances. As you can see, we're actually really trying to kick it. We're not bathing it right now. This is about kicking from the front. From the side, it's much more difficult because when you hit the side, the legs tend to uh, 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 touch each other and collide each other, but it's very, you can push, pull to the side. And of course, you can kick it from the back. And one more time, we are not babying it. We're really trying to kick it down. And we are not able to uh, kick it to make it fall down. Also, we want to toughen it up. So we're show, uh, sh uh, throwing balls and different type of objects at the robot. You can also hit different parts of the links, not just the body. It shows the, how robust this is. Now, this is a, a 50 millimeter uh, uh, obstacle. Again, it's not using robot vision. Just by reactive control, it can handle these type of uh, uh, very difficult obstacles. In this case, it's a random obstacle field. Uh, that is actually a 5 centimeter foam. It's a uh, uh, sponge, and that's very difficult for robots to handle. But it can go over all different type of uh, uh, random objects. 
Now, this robot can run. If I understand correctly, this is the world's third running bipedal humanoid robot, and probably the first of the kind in uh, academia. So it's walking. It, this walked uh, 260 meters around uh, the building, and now it's entering to our lab. You can see sometimes get hits uh, it, the body gets hit by the door seal, but no problem. It's very robust. You might be curious what the robot is seeing. So this operation is completely uh, fully uh, autonomous. So this is the view from the robot. So the robot looks around, it uh, uh, identifies uh, uh, obstacles, and it does path planning autonomously, and it can navigate in this very clustered environment. As I mentioned, it's very fast. We believe this is the world's fastest walking robot, humanoid robot. It currently uh, walks at 2.1 meters per second. And as I mentioned, it can run. We do not know how fast it can run just yet because we don't have enough space in the lab. Uh, but yeah, so it can run. And it's the fastest walking robot. Let's make it do some useful things. Uh, moving boxes. Uh, disclaimer, this is an empty box. It's a small box. So it worked well, so we want to make it do some more bigger boxes. But it cannot see, so sometimes it puts it on its head to balance it. It's doing real-time balancing while doing bipedal locomotion. And we just made it uh, push carts. For this one, we didn't uh, develop new type of behavior. We just made it walk into a cart, and it works beautifully. And as I mentioned, again, in robotics, this is a bold statement. Having a robot walk outdoors in the unstructured environments without any tethers. Uh, it can, you can see that a transition from the walkway to the grass, to the rubble pile, to the, the gravel pile. It is now very, very stable. So we are very, very excited about this robot called Artemis, Advanced Robotics Technology for Enhanced Mobility and Improved Stability. However, in our lab, the name Artemis is a different type of acronym. We call it a robot that exceeds Messi in soccer. Because we want to use this robot for a competition called RoboCup. You probably know, uh, there's many different types of competition, robotics competitions out there. One of our favorite competitions is called RoboCup. It's an international autonomous robot soccer competition where teams from all around the world come and compete against each other using robots. The robots are fully autonomous. They look for the ball, they search for and kick the ball. Uh, the official goal of RoboCup is by the year 2050, 2050, have a team of robots play soccer against the human World Cup champions and win. It's an official goal. So there's that goal. Uh, uh, we're, uh, we're doing it. We've been five-time world champions in RoboCup, but that was eight years ago. And this year, we brought Artemis to, uh, to participate in RoboCup for the first time. This year, it was in uh, Bordeaux, France. Let me show you a quick video clip. So these are two Artemis robots. Again, it's fully autonomous. Nobody's touching anything. Nobody's controlling anything. The two students behind it, we call these uh, people uh, robot handlers. So they are not touching the robot, they're just there just for safety. Now this is an exhibition game against yeah. Team Nimbro from Germany. Germany's been the world champions uh, for the past uh, five years, I believe. <laughs> Our robot was the fastest robot and the strongest robot at Robocop. It's much more exciting in person, by the way. <laughs> okay, one more time. Nobody's controlling it. The robot is looking for the ball using two cameras' vision system, uh, vision-based localization. The robot needs to figure out where he or it is in the soccer field. It needs to identify the balls, the other robots, and also do uh, real-time planning. Do it! Do it! Yeah, it's kicking the other robot. Maybe that's intentional. Just kidding. <laughs> I always get a kick out of this whenever I see this video. Go, go for it. Okay. One more goal. One more goal. You can do it. Okay. Uh. Okay. Right, right foot, right foot. Almost there. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> anyway, uh, we didn't do too well in RoboCup this year. Just because your robot is fast and strong doesn't mean that you can win a game. But next year is going to be in Netherlands. So please be uh, 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 keep an eye open for our team. By the way, right after we came back from RoboCup, I'm really active on social media. And one day I opened up my Instagram and I got 1,000 followers in one, one day. So what's happening? And I looked and... I saw that uh, 
this is Bill Gates. Follow me. And I checked, and that's a real Bill Gates. So Bill Gates, he has like 8 million followers, and he only follows like 200 people. I'm one of them. <laughs> and he reposted that and says, it's super impressive to see Artemis in action in Robocop 2023.